sound I love to hear It's the sound of the Savior's robe As he walks into the room Where people pray Where we hear praises
shadow that you won't be found in your face illuminates the deep in me Ooh, now I'm like you Ooh, 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 ooh. 
find another like you, another like you. None like you, Jesus. There's none like you. So faithful and so true. I want to remind you of words which we all learned probably when we were younger. It's, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you reflect on that verse, just know and understand that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, with that being said, what you are going through right now doesn't change who he is. Okay? So, your current situation doesn't change who God is your relationship status doesn't change who God is your current mood doesn't change who God is your bank balance doesn't change who God is your achievements or your failures doesn't change who God is. Our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So your situation can only be changed by one person, and that is none like you, Jesus. And He can change your present situation. He's the same yesterday today and forevermore his love towards you doesn't change he doesn't love you because of your righteousness he's not loving you because of what you're doing for him he loves you regardless I want to remind you of one more word that's Romans 5 8 that says while we were yet sinners is the key word of that verse God showed his love for us while we were yet sinners that he came down to this earth and gave his life for us with his arms stretched wide that's how he showed his love for you not because of what you did not because you're righteous not because you did something great it's because he chose to love us even while we were sinners so that same love that he loved then while you were sinners he still loves you today because he's the same yesterday today and forever his love for you is not changing so regardless of your situation he still loves you regardless of your circumstances he still loves you regardless what you did he still loves you regardless where you've been he still loves you what a mighty God we serve and what we could do is return the gratefulness his compassion with every breath that he gave us we could return it by his praise let's give him praise because he deserves it all there is none like you there's none like you lord
gracious, compassionate, always loving Heavenly Father. We thank you, God, for choosing us and separating us from the people of this world, calling us your own and loving us so much. Regardless what we're going through, Lord, you still love us. Regardless what we've done, you still love us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and embracing us in your wide open arms, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us with another beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to gather here together to give you praise, Lord Jesus, because you deserve it all, Lord Jesus. Lord, nobody else could love us as much as you do. Lord, we give all our praise to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you deserve all the glory, honor, and praise. Lord, I bring this worship meeting today into your hands, Lord Jesus. Lord, we bring the uh, speaker into your hands, Lord Jesus. Lord, minister through him, Lord Jesus. Deal with our hearts. Help us to listen to your word and be receptive to it. Let understand, Lord, how much you care and love us, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray for this church, every members of this church, Lord, the youngsters, Lord Jesus. We pray for everybody who is visiting us here, attending this meeting live. We also pray for people who are watching us online, Lord Jesus. Provide us with our spiritual needs, physical needs, emotional well-being, and everything that we need, Lord Jesus. Lord, this message is powerful that you're going to speak, Lord Jesus, because it's your word, Lord Jesus. Lord, it doesn't matter when, who is watching online. It doesn't have to be today. That word is still powerful because it's your word, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, we pray for the offering that's going to take place and people who stretch their hands, Lord Jesus. Lord, thank you for meeting us where we are, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving us, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we ask. Amen. Let's clap our hands and give God praise this morning time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Okay, we can, we can do that once again. Let's clap our hands and give God praise. Hallelujah. We serve a wonderful, hallelujah, and almighty God. Amen. Amen. He's been so good to us. Even when we look at throughout the week, the week that we passed, even in the circumstances when you thought when you started the week, God has been faithful and he has led us and he has brought us unto a new week just to glorify him and to worship his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the worship team for ushering us into such a wonderful time of worship. Thank you, Lord. Just want to welcome everybody to the altar church where sacrifices are made and a new life is being born. If you're new here for the first time, we just want to welcome you to church. And, and if you don't have a church of your the place that you're going to or you don't have a common church, our church is more than happy to welcome you into this place and uh, to, to, to make you feel at home. And um, on the way out, if you're new here today, uh, our guest services would like to meet and greet with you and we have a small gift for you. Uh, we have upcoming uh, services and the program for the month that we have is on August 6th, we have a fasting and prayer that's coming up. And August 7th, we have the youth pastor installation service uh, along with the communion service. And August 28th, we have a calling outreach event. Calling outreach event. We're partnering with, uh, with one of the groups out here in Allen, Texas. And uh, we require volunteers to come and be a part of it. There is going to be a sign-up sheet. You can put your name if you're interested uh, to be a part of it. Amen. We're God. We are ambassadors of Christ. And uh, God wants us to use us outside the church as well, right? And uh, this is a great opportunity where we together as a church, we can go out and serve others as well. And the exciting thing that's coming up in the month of September from 2nd to 4th is our retreat. How many of you are excited for our retreat? Hey, and um, our retreat is going to be held at uh, the Sky Ranch. And uh, the, the announcements and the theme for the retreat will be forthcoming. Amen. How many feel excited to hear the word of God this morning time? Amen. Amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask the Lord, Lord. Open our hearts, our mind. Speak to us this morning time, God. Lord, let it not be my words, O oh God, this morning. 
But I pray, O oh Lord, Father, Holy Spirit, that you would come in and you would take your place in every heart that is here this morning time. And those who are listening to us online, O oh God, I pray, O oh Lord, Father, that your hand will be there upon their life. Even as the word is spoken, I pray, O oh God, Father, there will be, O oh Lord, a freedom in different areas of their lives, O oh God. I pray, O oh Lord, there would be healing to different parts, Lord, Father. We pray and we summit to the word. I pray, O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way. In the name of Jesus, we ask all these things. Amen, amen, amen. This morning time, I just want to take your attention to the book of Jeremiah. A wonderful book in the Old Testament. Amen. Jeremiah, known to be a major prophet. And when we read Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah saying that, I knew you before you were being formed in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nation. Jeremiah, God is talking to Jeremiah and saying that you are being selected and you're being appointed to be a prophet, not only to Judah and to Jerusalem, but to the nations. Over here in the following chapter, when we read the chapter, we see that the verses where Jeremiah says that, Lord, I am I'm not worthy enough. I cannot. I'm just young. But the Lord said to Jeremiah, I have chosen you. Amen. This morning time, I just want to say to the church, when God has called us, be ready to go. When God has called you, be ready to do it. Jeremiah was ready. Even though when he looked at his age, he was incapable. He must be a young boy who is not, when he, looking at his circumstances, he thought that he's not able to do it. But he listened to the voice of God. And he was a prophet bringing judgment and the grace of God upon Judah and about uh, and Jerusalem. And we know that Jeremiah was being selected at such a point of this where, where we see that the people of God were turning their back against God. God had created man in his own image, in his likeness to have a relationship with him. Throughout when we read the scriptures where we see that when God intended to have this relationship, man always wanted to go astray and do the things of their own. That is what sin leads to. Sin gets us into our life and makes us to do things that we are not supposed to do. But God intended us and created us to worship him. To lift his name up. But when we look into the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, and even in this present generation, we know that God has called us, sanctified us, and set us apart. But what happens is the patterns of this world always turns us and takes us into that direction. And Jeremiah is being appointed at such a time of this to call on to the people and say to turn their back from the evil, wicked ways and get back into the presence of God. Hallelujah. This morning, church, in this present day and age, this is what God is asking the church in America. This is what God is asking the church at altar to turn from the wicked ways and get to the path where God is asking us to go. Amen. 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 That is where God wants us to be at. But oftentimes we see ourselves to move away from the promises of God, to move away from what God has ordained and what God has said. Jeremiah is saying there is a judgment coming. But a beautiful time that God, whenever he says that judgment is coming, he always offers his grace as well. Have you seen that in the story of Noah? Right? When God asked him to go where? Sorry, Noah, Jonah, my bad. <laughs> so God asked him to go to the place of Nineveh, but he wants to run away. But there is a grace of God if they repented and if they repented in sackcloth and ashes. And what happened? God removed his wrath away. The same thing that we hear in Jeremiah's story that God wants to bring his grace and favor to the people. But the people we hear do not want to listen to him. They want to go astray. And we read in the Bible, there's beautiful metaphors where God is treating his children. And here we see in different verses in Psalms 23 that we would see that Jesus is, is characterized as a shepherd and we are a sheep. 
and different places where we see that uh, we are the bride and he's the groom ready to come and receive us. In Jeremiah chapter 18, I want you to open your Bibles if you have with me. Jeremiah chapter 18 verses 1 to 6. It's a beautiful place where we see this. And if you've never been to a porter's house, this morning time, I want to welcome you to the porter's house. We do have a small video that will be played showing how the porter's house is. What's number one says, the Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, go down to the porter's shop and I will speak to you there. So I did as he told me, and I found the potter working on his wheel. But the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped for. So he crushed it, and he made it into a lump of clay again and started over. I repeat the verse 4 again. The jar he was making did not turn out the way he had hoped for. So what he did, he crushed it and he made it into a lump of clay again. Verse five, the Lord says, the Lord gave me this message, O Israel, can I not do to you as this potter has done to his clay? As the clay is in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands. He makes us new again. He makes us as a pot that will be used for his glory. When you look at this pot, which was being broken and he rebuilt it. And the voice of the Lord said, Oh Israel, can I not do the same thing with you? This morning to the church, what I have to bring and what the Holy Spirit is saying that in our brokenness, in our places where we see undefeat, we're being, being defeated. God is saying, can I not build your life back? Can I not repair you and make you into a vessel that will bring glory unto God? This morning, the Lord is ready. Are you ready for it though? The Lord is ready, but are you ready? Am I ready for this? The Lord wants to form you and want to work with you, with him, with your life. And become a vessel that will carry his glory unto the ends of this age. God wants us to be a vessel where we would carry his glory unto the ends of the age. And Isaiah chapter 64 verse 8 says, And yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. We are all formed by the potter. Hallelujah. We have a distinct purpose and he's formed us. Most of the times when we are in this phase of life, when we are in the rush of life, we forget the purpose that God had intended in our lives for. And Isaiah is reminding and saying that that we are the clay, Lord, and you are the potter. You are the one that forms us and makes us into something. This morning, God is ready to do what he can in your life, but we got to be ready to be in the center of God's will. I just want to take you to the process of how this pottery is made. How many of you have seen the potter's wheel? Very few. So hopefully this video had helped. 
So seeing the, the potter work on the pot is really beautiful. I've been maybe many years back when there was a, I think there was some kind of fair or something that I went and I saw this potter working on the wheel. It was really beautiful. You would just stand, gaze, looking at it for long hours. It's beautiful that the potter never takes his hands off, rarely takes his hands off when he's working on the pot. Hallelujah. God, when, when we see our lives going through a chaos, always remember that God is still there working on our lives. Amen. God is still working in our lives. Maybe we will not see it. Even when you look at the clay, the clay would not be able to understand, but God is still working. But let me get into the process of how we find this clay. Like how we find right now, we, cannot, we can go to Home Depot and find a, a, a pottery clay, we can find it. But in the olden times, even now, when clay is found in a really dirty place, stinky place, a place where none of us would just go with our clothes just because you get dirty, you get messy to find good clay. But the potter goes into the stinkiest place of this world and gets to a place and picks that clay. Amen. God has got out. He sent his son, Jesus, hallelujah, to die on the cross for us. Despite the sin that we were in, despite the ugliness that we carried in our lives, he stretched forth his life for us and he carried us out of the miry clay and set our feet upon a rock to stay. And he put a new song in my mouth to sing that many will see it and trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has picked us up from that miry clay. Hallelujah. And he has set us and he's given a meaning. Most of the times we look into our lives and we say, Lord, I have no meaning in my life. I do not know where I'm headed. But he paid his life as a price and he picked you up from the miry clay and he bought it onto that place. He picked us up. From that stinky sin that we had in the unrotten relationship that we were in. He picked us up and he separated us. Hallelujah. God has picked you up. Hallelujah. You are worth. You have some worth in you. Hallelujah. Don't let the people around you, do not let the world around you say otherwise. You are have worth. Amen. You are worth. When we see in Psalms 40 verse 2, it says that with great love and infinite care, our Savior drew us up from that filthy pit and set our feet on a rock and established our going. He's the one that established our going. He's the one that set us apart. He's the one that called us and set us into his family. When we look into the potter's life, the potter brings his clay and next thing that we see is he does not take the clay and place it on the wheel to make it a pot. So the clay is being taken and the next process of this clay is going through a cleansing process. Say with me, cleansing process. Cleansing process. So this part of what he does is in the place where this clay is taken, there's a lot of twigs, stones and pebbles that is in the clay. But think about it, when you're putting this same clay on the wheel and started rotating, it would just crumble and fall because of all the stones and pebbles and the twigs in it. So there is a cleaning process the clay has to go through. Hallelujah. There's a cleaning process this clay goes through. And our potter, what does he do? He takes a careful examination of our lives as we, as being the clay. Hallelujah. Listen to me carefully. There will be parts of your life where people have put into your life. Maybe it could be, it could be disbelief. It could be lies. It could be dis distrust. It could be different instances that God, people around us have put into us. But when the potter gets the clay in his hands, the first thing that the potter does is goes through a careful examination, takes it out one by one and say that you are loved. Takes it again and say that you are loved. Takes it again and says that you are loved. The potter cares so much for the clay. And that is why God is saying to Jeremiah, can I not do the same thing to you as well? 
Hallelujah. Doesn't matter where our situation is. Doesn't matter the lies that is being infested in our lives. This morning time, when we get back into our table with Jesus, he's ready to break. He's ready to mold you. He's ready to take all the hurt away that people have put in your life. And he's trying to bring about, hallelujah, a complete satisfaction of joy into your life. But mind it, the process is painful. That process is painful. It's not easy. Think about it. Have you ever kneaded dough when you want to make bread? It's something hotter than that. That's how the potter needs it. Needs it and presses it. Sometimes when to get it, to get it into a consistency where it is, where it is able, where the potter can mold it, sometimes they use sticks to hit it. So the, it's painful. The process of cleansing in our lives is painful. It's not easy at all. Amen? It's not easy at all. When God is confronting you, when the Holy Spirit is confronting you of some sins that you have in your life, it's painful to remove it. Hallelujah. But this morning time, if you're ready to remove those sins out of your life, that is when you can see the work of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That is when you would be made into a vessel that will bring glory unto the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We can be, the, we can have all the pebbles within us. We can have the, all the twigs within us, all that sin, hallelujah. But when we are being brought into the wheel with all the sin that is encroaching us, we would tumble and fall. But we got to go through a cleansing process to be a right vessel for God. Hallelujah. You and I got to be that right vessel that will bring glory unto God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 was 21, 1 was 21, uh, 1 was 27 says that we were created in the likeness and in the image of God. He created us. He created us. Hallelujah. And in his image, he created them as male and female. Hallelujah. He created us in the likeness and image of God. But what happened to our lives? We got so stuck to the patterns of this world. We got so stuck with the friends around us. And all those influences are on this clay right now. So in the cleansing process, God wants to make you and me just like him. That's a painful process. That's when he says, hey, your son, your daughter, that sin got to be removed from your life. You got to get back to that place and correct it and get move forward. If you want to get into the next place, into the next phase of life, you need to correct this right away. This morning time, I do not know what you're carrying in the clay that you are in. But if you want to be molded by the potter, Holy Spirit is bringing some sins into your life that you got to correct and get right with. There are certain things in your life that you want to get right with God. God is giving this opportunity to get right with. Jeremiah was a prophet. He proclaimed the word of God. This day and age, there are people